My name is Ria Mirchandani. I'm a sophomore and a refugee. Not a political refugee, but an intellectual one, from a country where one is allowed to pursue only a singular field of education and has to select that field at the naive age of 18. I wasn't ready to commit, especially when I didn't know what it was I wanted to commit to. Today, I'd like to share my story with you. Like every other college student, I'm currently in the midst of an existential quarter life crisis where I'm questioning the purpose of everything, including that of TED Talks. <laughs> but for now, let's return to the tale of Ria the refugee. I may sound a tad bit dramatic here, but the rigid Indian educational system, with its emphasis on gaining a marketable degree rather than a broad understanding of the world, can become intellectually oppressive. While I'm eternally grateful for its attempts to turn me into a human calculator, I knew by the time I had reached high school that I had to make my escape soon. So here I am today, seeking asylum at Brown University and finding solace in its open curriculum. I've taken classes in departments ranging from engineering to the literary arts in search of my calling. People tell me, you don't know what the heck you're doing. And I tell them, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I've taken 15 classes in 15 different departments. Graduating in four years seems harder than getting into Brown did two years ago. <laughs> My diverse academic interests have always put me to extreme ends of the learning spectrum, from the sciences to the humanities. In high school, I did a project where these competing interests came to a collision. It was a physics project where we had to analyze the physics in everyday life. So I chose to do mine on the construction of a recent cable state bridge in my city, Mumbai, called the Bandra Worli Sea Link. This bridge was an engineering marvel, but it was also five years overdue. When I spoke to the engineers who built it, our talks began with mathematical discussions of tensions and compressions, but we ended up talking about stresses of a different kind. I learned that in order to build this bridge, an entire coastal fishing community had to be displaced, which his community members obviously weren't very happy about. The engineers, for all their mathematical brilliance, lacked the interpersonal skills to communicate with these community members, either to convince them of the importance of this bridge or to reach some sort of compensation. So they outsourced this task to a group of negotiators, people who apparently had the socioeconomic background to understand the needs of the community. But these negotiators didn't understand a word of the language of engineering and as a result, could not convince the community members why the ugly gray pillar that on which the, the stability of this multi-million rupee structure had to be positioned exactly in the kitchens of homes and nowhere else. It was ironic that all three parties, the engineers, the community members, and the negotiators spoke the same language, but took five years to reach an agreement because of the information that was lost in translation. I began by telling you that this was a physics project. As you may have noticed, I didn't speak about much physics. Similarly, the report I finally handed in to my high school physics teacher spoke a little too extensively about these other problems that couldn't be described in terms of Newton's laws. I didn't do too well on this assignment. <laughs> but I'd like to think that if you asked me to build a bridge today, I'd do a better job than my high school physics teacher who graded me. <laughs> With time, I've realized that my dual academic interests can be a boon rather than a burden. My bridge project helped me understand that in the real world, science and humanities cannot survive in isolation. It only leads to inefficiency, like it did to build that bridge in India. The people who have realized this are the ones who've had the most impact. From Leonardo da Vinci to our very own Steve Jobs. Jobs had one philosophy, that the hardware, software, marketing, and packaging of all his products should go hand in hand, because they're completely interdependent. And that's the skill I hope a liberal arts education is able to give me. The ability to see things holistically, the big picture, but at the same time, the ability to zoom in on the details, if I so choose to. Today, everyone is scrambling to buy fancy new cameras that can zoom in the maximum. But what if a camera lacked the ability to zoom out? A photographer would be lost in the details of something which he may not even want to be photographing, but he wouldn't be able to take a step back to see the big picture, to go wide before going deep. I admit, this going wide before going deep strategy can have its disadvantages. You can end up going too wide and not deep at all, becoming a jack of all trades and a master of none, as they say. This phrase is often used disparagingly to imply that you will never be exceptional at any one thing. But does that mean you won't be exceptional? During my time at Brown, 
I've picked up my fair share of Bs, and I've realized that though I'm interested in everything, I'm not particularly good at anything. <laughs> but in the midst of our academic adventures, I've also picked up a skill set, that a unique skill set, that somebody who is narrowly focused on fulfilling major requirements would not be able to match. I'd like to think that this is what makes me the exception. Because being exceptional is not just about being outstanding. It's also about standing out. You may ask me, what's the point in a physics major being able to understand Shakespeare's Hamlet? I wouldn't have an answer for you. It's something I'm figuring out for myself. In terms of job prospects in the big bad world out there, I can't say. Because lucky for me, I still live in Brown's bubble. <laughs> but I can speak for myself and say that personally, I want to have the skills that will let me appreciate both these areas of life. I feel like the more I expand my mind with diverse knowledge, the greater its surface area will be for me to absorb and understand my environment so I can truly engage with it. At the end of the day, each of us just wants to make an impact, to leave our footprints on the sands of time, as the poet Longfellow had said. I believe a liberal arts education is the best means of doing this. It's like looking at a pair of 3D glasses for the first time. With one lens red and the other blue, you wonder how this could do anything but possibly mess with your eyesight. But when you put it on, it allows you to see the world differently, another, adding another dimension to it, quite literally. So while my extremely liberal, liberal education may not make me the best doctor, and may not make me the best economist, it will help me see things differently, think differently, and hopefully to make a difference. Thank you.